Hey Sol, we're at Rapid Plus TCT and I'm here with Luke from Luke's Laboratory. Luke is awesome. He visited the studio and we turned the Orange Storm Giga into the Blue Storm Terra. That's right. And that's currently in production. But what I was really excited about was Luke was bringing a StableBot Pro to the show. Yep. And because you helped me with the Blue Storm, I recognize some of the parts. So let's go over the StableBot Pro, yeah. the parts that are on it, and what its capabilities are. Starting off here, uh, the main components that we have are, are really the tool head. So the StableBot Pro is actually an IDEX machine, or IDEX capable. You could have one tool head if you really wanted, but who wants that? Really, people, um, people still love the IDEX, huh? So the, the reason people really want IDEX is so that they can have not only two separate materials that are wildly different, but they can also have stuff like soluble supports when they're printing geometries that are impossible to support traditionally, or they want a, a nice smooth surface. The simplest example you can use is PETG and PLA, where you they don't mix, they don't adhere, and you can build whatever the heck you want. Um, the next components that are really shared on the uh, Blue Storm Terra. Yeah, Blue Storm, not Orange Storm. Storm. Blue Storm, uh, Luke. I, yep, you got me. <laughs> is, uh, I also use an LGX Pro. Um, I'm using it with the Champ adapter for the tube conduction, so it's very similar. Well, the Champ adapter is something new, right? It's, That's it's, correct. It's that kind of, it's the geometry that acts as a bit of a heat sink, is that right? That's exactly right. So uh, we, we've opted to include it with this machine so you can attach a fan if you need to, to cool off the air to guarantee pristine performance because the motor itself, when you're pushing it really hard, can get hotter. So this How many amps do you push into the LGX Pro? So uh, I like to use 0.7. Bontech will frown at me a little <laughs> bit there. But uh, when I'm able to cool both the hot end and the extruder at the same time, I'm able to get away with it without any problem. Really? Okay. Yeah. We okay. actually also have uh, water-cooled versions that plug into the same location if oh, you really cool. want to push the boundaries. So we have that. We have the tube uh, conduction. Uh, so 52 millimeters of melt zone, all the flow. Uh, this one here is low with a 1.8 millimeter nozzle, so uh, <laughs> it, it won't be moving today, but at least we'll be able to push some filament through and just let's show talk, the oodles and oodles. Let's talk a little bit about that, and, and and the reason why we have to address it is because this this fantastic machine should have been just moving like crazy and spitting out plastic like you wouldn't believe, yep. but there were issues with shipping. This uses quad, uh, quad Z, it has hung lead screws, because uh, you're always supposed to use lead screws in tension, but the, so the motors are on the bottom. Uh, they're supported by standoffs. These standoffs are not intended to be structural. They're just intended to prevent the motors from rotating as they rotate the machine. Uh, in shipping, they became structural. <laughs> um, in addition, our uh, our paneling, uh, just due to timing constraints, flew a little too close to the sun, all that That's kind fair. of stuff, That's right? That's fair. Uh, we ship the panels separately. Uh, UPS decided to have a, uh, a field goal uh, tourney and decided to kick it or so something. So yeah. we got we got panels bent up and just a couple other things here. So uh, unfortunately, uh, it powers up. I mean, I could flip on flip on the power and have all the blinky lights we okay, want. Okay, blinky lights are good. But unfortunately, the, the mechanics of the machine are, are just what they are. So we've left it in uh, sport mode, which is uh, showing that you can cantilever <laughs> your bed however you want because we have Active Z, uh, all the servos and stuff like that. But it, it won't be printing today. Now, a StableBot Pro, something like this machine, the use cases are far different from the people who are, for example, that have Etsy shops 3D printing things. What are the yep. use cases that your customers see for the machine like this? Um, it's honestly a lot of automotive stuff. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah, I've actually had a, a couple customers. Uh, probably my, my favorite example is that they needed something that was 200 by 400 by 800 millimeters tall, and they needed it printed by Monday. <laughs> it was Saturday night. <laughs> So uh, that was actually printed on the machine over there, but okay. I was able to get out a kilo and a half of material printed in a, in a tall cylindrical object that was meant to represent a body panel, I believe it was. I see. Um, and I get that, got that shipped out on Monday. And what material was it? It was just PLA. So a oh, lot of them it was, are, okay. Yeah, so a lot of like the automotive stuff where they're fitting up a new bumper or some of them are printing wheels, like wheel mock-ups to show how it would look or like a wheel cover or like a wheel itself. Um, those are not necessarily structural. Oh, oh, so the automotive industry is using it as a way to get quick proof of concept exactly. prototypes yep. or for fitment. Yep. Okay. Exactly. And that's actually why we, we focus so much on speed and productivity in the, in the pro lineup is that when you have an idea and you want to see it in person, you know, an executive is going to be like, can I have that tomorrow? And if they can say yes, everyone wins, right? That's a really good point. But yeah. the pros though, the, this pro machine is going to be fully enclosed. That is correct. So uh, actually the enclosure is an option. So you can get this as bare bones as an open air machine. The only panel would be the um, the electronics enclosure here. You can get this naked. Yeah. You can get it, this it naked. It would look weird, wouldn't it? 
I am used to printing ABS at the minimum. <laughs> so yeah, it would look really weird to me, but uh, no, you can get this open air. It's designed that you can, you can get it kitted. So this machine can arrive in a pallet of somewhat pre-assembled parts and you build it yourself similar to the, uh, the Blue Storm. Oh, okay, um, I see. Or um, you can order this completely assembled and it arrives ready to, you plug it in, you hook it up to your Wi-Fi and, or not, and away you go. That's cool. Now there's no screen, obviously. So the screen is over here. Again, shipping shenanigans. So the, the, the touch screen will have that RGB indicator so you can see how your machine is doing across the factory floor if you need to. Because uh, places have a wide variety of situations where this is in an office room or this could be on a warehouse among other CNC machines or, and just printed away. It's really handy having that sort of heads up display put your attention where it's needed to, especially on a factory floor yep. when you have multiple shifts running. Uh, and speaking of multiple shifts, then we have to think of print farm operators mm -hmm. and you're utilizing Clipper here, right? That is correct. I just run box center Clipper. I don't do anything custom. I don't do a custom image with disabled security updates so it doesn't break my custom implementation. I run modern danger Clipper in a modern setting without any kind of extra hacks other than installing the beacon plugin. That's, That's it. it. That's okay. it. Okay. Do you find that Clipper as, as a firmware for the machine, do you, do you find that print farm operators might be confused or is it too complex? Or do you think Clipper has modernized to a point of being a, a fantastic print farm solution? In particular for Danger Clipper, where they've added in a lot of the error messages that I've suggested that, that say, okay. hey, uh, standard Clipper uh, used to tell you, hey, you had an ADC error, which means a temperature error, but it wouldn't tell you which one, how to look at it, or what the problem is. So Danger Clipper now tells you which one, oh. and what value it saw, and why it thinks it might be broken. Those kind of things. Well, that's to, super to handy. The operator. Yep. Um, I. That's just as, polished, though, right? It is. Yeah. It really is. Um, in general, uh, the logging in Clipper is very powerful. So once you have an operator that does understand how to do this, and I offer training. So I offer to go out on site, train the operators on how to troubleshoot, how to uh, go through it, how to make config modifications if they so choose, that kind of stuff. Um, but the the logs built into Clipper are very powerful for determining what happened, why it happened, and, and kind of going from there. We tried to get Danger Clipper on the Orange Storm Giga, right? And it's we, running on it. Well, we ended up with it, but because we had to give it a different brain. Correct. Okay, so the brain is a is a kraken on that. What's the brain on here? So uh, this one is currently running an Octopus Pro, but it can run a Kraken. So right now, this is running uh, servos. So the servos actually take the step dir outputs from the step sticks and just incorporate it directly into the servos here. Oh. Um, the Kraken has all of the drivers built in, mm -hmm. so it would be a great option for people who choose not to go with servos and they just want to stick with standard steppers. They're basically interchangeable. Nothing really changes except for like the orientations, how you plug it in. Then is the StableBot Pro something that you love? You offer that level of customization to? Yep. So there's going to be uh, the the Pro lineup is intended to be a lot less customizable than my current StableBot lineup is. But uh, servos are going to be one of the options. It's going to be standard with IDEX. You can option down if you choose. Uh, the and the enclosure is going to be the real option, um, alongside the biggest one, which is size. So this is actually probably the smallest platform that will be offered on the StableBot Pro. So this is a 600 by 600 by meter build volume. Um, I am. <laughs> intending on offering up to about two meters, two meters of width. So that's what this frame is sized for. Okay, now that actually leads me to a, a really good question because a lot of people, they told Elegoo they were wrong by not using uh, Core XY on the machine. But Core XY doesn't scale, right? No, no it does not. Um, so these are 12 millimeter belts on here. Uh, they are almost too small for a 600 millimeter machine. Those larger platforms will be using probably a 20 millimeter wide belt and 20 more. 20 millimeter or more? Correct, correct. So the longer the span gets, the worse your responsiveness gets. So when you're applying a force here, you get less tight response on this tool head mm. and on this crossbar here. Second, uh, this uses two motors. So there's actually a, a motor in the back and motor here for the X axis. So you can move this entire gantry as heavy as it is but you get double the actuating force and double the stiffness from, from two belts here. So with a Core XY, you only get two belts, but you have to move everything all at once. <laughs> and it's just not, not the best, especially going in 45 degree angles where you have one motor powering the entire bar and tool head at the same time. Oh, I see. So there's, it's almost, it's, it's easier to add motors to a single axis rather than doing diagonals when you get to a certain size. Yes. Yep, that's exactly right. So it has shorter belt lengths and more motor per axis, period. Oh, I love, I love seeing that. And 20 or more millimeters for a belt. 
Yeah. Like that's that's absurd in the best way possible. Well then, what is the, how hot can this get? Uh, everything in here right now uh, can get up to 100 deg 120 degrees Celsius. Okay, the chamber. The chamber, yep. Yeah. So everything in this, in this machine is designed for at least 20 millimeters of PIR insulation with a reflective barrier. So that plus a chamber heater should easily get this chamber to 120 degrees Celsius. You can cook breakfast in here. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can. Um, our, we also offer a bed option that can go over 200 degrees Celsius. What kind of materials bed. would require that? Polycarbonate is actually one that you want to print hotter. So, oh, really? Yeah, yep, so pure polycarbonate, like stuff that 3DX Tech makes or some of the other vendors here may make, um, that's a more pure resin instead of something that's been mixed or blended. Those are really recommended at 100 C plus for chamber temperatures. Oh, wow. You can get away with 70, you can mostly get away with 90. Okay, but, but in a proper scenario. And you're printing big, you need oh, a yeah. pristine chamber temperature. And what's that melting at? So, uh, that's about like, you know, 330C, 340C. Which you can do hot. easily, right? Yeah, the, the tube hotting can do 500C all day, every day. <laughs> Quite, That's speed too, day. right? Because you're running Clipper, you've got input shaping, so yep. we're... We got input shaping, we have closed loop servos that run FOC controls. We're not, look, but you're not looking at layer shifting with a, with no. a servo. No, no, right. no, it, it just, no. It just doesn't, it just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't. There's more than enough power, and we have NEMA 23s on the, y, on the X axis <laughs> for that reason as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's intended to be pro because you press the button and you get a print. Can you mention what the expected price and availability of the pro is? Yeah, so we're missing a couple other things in here. So with touchscreen, uh, filament sensing, uh, camera mounted in here to take a visibility, um, this will be about $17,000 in the configuration shown as a kit. Uh, assembly will be about 8,000 more, uh, but that gets you this machine as assembled, shipped to your door, arrives ready to plug in. That oh, case. meaning if they, if they opt for that, it arrives yep. on a crate, they take it off and yep. they plug it in and they, they start printing right then. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So some places may opt to assemble it themselves. Maybe they have an intern who really likes 3D printers and they build stuff. Plenty, plenty more places prefer a, uh, I just, I just want to plug it in, please. And that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's about 17,000 for this. Um, and the other larger options are being priced out. Right Dude, now. this is cool, man. Well, uh, sorry about the shipping damages, but I think this is going to be really popular here at Rapid. I think people are going to be excited to learn more about it. I, I certainly hope so. I'm also disappointed by the shipping stuff, but this is how you learn and get better. Hey, it just means future shipments are going to be much better. Yeah, yep, indeed. Well, uh, look right there at the camera and let everybody know where they can find out more about Luke's Laboratory and the StableBot Pro. You can go to lukeslabonline.com. Uh, uh, that's my website. It has a lot of this information. Um, I'm hoping to write blogs a lot more on just helping out with 3D printing, how to tune stuff. Um, you can also find out more on Twitter and I'm on Instagram as well. I'll, we'll be posting useful tips and tricks along the way as, as we get time. Well, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the massive things, right? All the massive all things. All the massive things. All right. And as always, high five. You want one? Five. Yes.